Indian government. There are members who have spoken to me privately that it sounded as if they are just, uh, you know, used all the time. And this is the fate of Sabah. We become used all the time. Uh, if you look at the word used, the recent general election also proved um, that out of six, out of uh, 56 parliamentarians, nine of which went to the opposition, the 48 created and ensured that the federal government led by AMNO continues. And in that sense, Sabah shaped your future, for, especially for those in West Malaysia. Some Sabahans, uh, some West Malaysian friends have said to me, you complain so much about UMNO, you complain so much about West Malaysia, but it is you people who gave them life, the least of you. And this is a fact I have to accept. Probably because of the lack of uh, knowledge on our part, in Sabah, or probably even the fear of change in Sabah, but mostly largely due to a lot of misunderstanding between Sabahans themselves. Um, when a minute after midnight, a minute after midnight, when the results were official, I was pretty disappointed because I really thought that we would become government. And my reason for joining politics, or at least the uh, Party Kadilan or Makatar Makyat, was to ensure that something new came out. I was doing pretty well as a lawyer. Having had practice at the time about 18 years, I was doing okay. But when I got to politics, everything went for me, went down south side. But at the end of the day, the ultimate goal was to bring something back to Sabah. The goals that Jeffrey started years ago, the goals that many friends started years ago and lost, was to emplace Sabah, Sarawak and West Malaysia into that dream that began in 1963. 1963 was our dream where we thought we were of equal partners. I was not born yet. But I could, I could feel that feeling that they had. They were probably given or pressured into a situation to agree to the formation, but with that great belief that the Malaysia, the Federation of Malaysia that they envisioned, would be a fair one. But sad enough, no. And from a fair vision to now just a fixed deposit. Now, really, we are not a fixed deposit, but we are a force to be reckoned You can see Sarawak, the current chief minister, either he's paddling to, uh, you know, to the ones of the Sarawakians of Borneo. He speaks as if he's, the, he's like us. Jeffrey, Dr. Jeffrey, he speaks as if he's like us, right? At the Nansa Tam, the new yeah. chief minister. I understand he's a graduate from Australia too. So, um, he seems to speak that way. Now, let's hope that he's for real. Because, he has, he has 31 parliamentarians, um, 25 of which are with him in the ruling government in Sarawak. He could make a huge difference for Malaysia. He could make a huge difference for people like Sambek, Joe, you know, the Malaysians who are here. Jesse, you know, Malaysians like you. He'll make a huge difference. Or will he? Or will he just pander to this because it is, uh, you know, uh, the incoming generations in Sarawak? Amno has its ways. Amno is an animal that we have yet to really understand. They know how to catch you at the weakest moment, as they have shown how they caught a lot of our parliamentarians and even our state assemblymen to cross over towards their side. We don't know if Ajahn and Satam in Sarawak will do, but I do know that our chief minister in Sabah will never move on to the opposition, or at least to form a new coalition with the opposition national. He has his problems. Uh, I remember doing an expose of him on the Hong Kong um, money laundering and, and, and operation. Myself and my colleague, uh, Rafi Ziramli, we went up and down to Hong Kong. We met the independent uh, corruption agency in Hong Kong, and they told us a lot of things, which unfortunately I can't say. Um, they got pressured by it, and before the general election 13, they actually revealed that there was such a thing as this 
corruption money in the amount of 40 million. But which they said was a political contribution, not corruption. So Malaysians, or at least AMNO has a very weird definition of corruption. Political contribution is not corruption. 40 million, one from one man. 40, 40 million from one man is no joke. But they admitted, the minister and of course the prime minister admitted that such money existed, but it was a political contribution to unknown. Of course I was threatened with legal suits until now it's none. Time limitation still is on, and not on yet, so any time we could forget the civil rent of what we did. But these are parts and you know a collection of the struggles that we need to do for Sabah. The vision that I have as a member of parliament, representing an area called the Dampang. If you do go to Sabah, it's the first thing you see when you land in Sabah. Not the beaches, unfortunately, but uh, you know, Sabah, the Dampang. And um, we have always had a unique uh, position because my area, the Dampang, um, was always supposedly the awakenings of the Karezanas. Of course, I don't propagate a singular race. I propagate Sama, Sarawak, and West Malaysia. But coming from the Kadazan community, this was always the front. Uh, we had the Tambunan uh, uprising in 1984. Now I see uh, some sort of a different uprising in Sama. The younger generations in Penampang spoke up against a very popular man who speaks a lot about the same issues as we do with the difference that he is in the ruling front. And when we beat him, we beat him not personally, but we beat the idea that you can work together with him. And this was very loud in the 13th general elections. I wish to continue a new vision for my area. And I wish to continue that vision together with our West Malaysian friends. There are a lot of West Malaysians I met who are only becoming aware after years and years of uh, articles, comments, discussions, and debates, which began really from, and I have to say, from Dr. Jeffrey, uh, and you know, continued by a lot of us. And there are West Malaysians talking that same subject that Sabahans are talking, maybe because they want to. You know, they want to honor what was the intent and purpose of 1963 at the formation. And I believe working with them is the answer to make sure that we will have this new federation of Malaysia. So many issues to, to sort out. I mean, I can't even begin from the oil agreement to the usage of Allah to the freedom to even speak the way you speak. These are the things that we ought to be solving. As a team, and the West Malaysians I know who are working with me think like that. Hence, in November last year, at the urging, and of course, Dr. Jeffrey was disappointed with Kadilan before, but somehow I continued what he wanted. At the urging of many friends, at the strategic uh, discussion that we had, Party Kadilan, under Article 5, adopted to honor the spirit and letter. Malaysian Agreement in So it's the first political party to adopt a promise to honor what was supposed to be Malaysia or the Federation of Malaysia right? uh, that was envisaged in 1963. It's a commitment now as a political party by Kadila. Whether or not our best Malaysian friends will comprehend it, I don't know. But 2,000 delegates just put up their hands and agreed with what we explained. And that's the beginning. If we can get 2,000 of our delegates to understand the cries, the needs, the wants of Sabahans and even Sabahans, I bet three years down the road, we will have probably the right side of Malaysia, West Malaysia. They will work with the right side of Sabahans. And that, I believe, is how we break this polit uh, political fixed deposit that Najib talks about. Heads, I wish to reiterate, we are not fixed deposit, but we are forced to be reckoned. And I hope you will do your research. I hope that you will conduct uh, your 
your, you know, your courses or even conduct discussions with your friends that and encourage them to stand up. We will, we will never reach the way Malaysia should be and Malaysia will always be this turmoil until you actually honour what began as the Federation of Malaysia. We in Kadazan, the Kadazans have this thing where, you know, when a promise is made, we are supposed to fulfil it regardless, wrong or right. Because this is how we, you know, uh, not wrong, not, of course we won't fulfil a wrong one, but what I'm trying to say is, uh, no matter how difficult it is, we must always honour our promise. West Malaysia, especially UMNO, took an opportunity at our weakness. They did not honour what Malaysia began as, and they want to continue the Malaysia that they want us to be. But not these young Malaysians that I see here. The fact that they are here, the fact that uh, some of them have even been threatened with, their, with the removal, or at least the withdrawal of their uh, scholarship, shows that these are the Malaysians that the Sabahans and Sarawakians can work with. The fact that uh, we have friends who have you know, not been back home for a long time but are still here tells you that they're interested. So that solution is so many, so, so many people will have their solutions and, and recommendations and what have you. I will add mine with this because Transformers is going to open this week. Optimus Prime said something very interesting. We must all step up, every one of us. And he said, Fate rarely calls upon us at the moment of our choosing. So we can't design this. But fate will, will bring us to where we should be. But not that our choosing. So come general election 30, 14, that is the way forward. So before I end, I like to share something. The, the dictionary I spoke of, which began with Father Antonison of the Mill Hill House, and given to the people of Sabah by the Canberra, by the government of Australia in Canberra in 1958, was reprinted recently um, as a second edition. And I want to give this to the university, especially you guys. You know, um, this is it for you all. You gave it to the people of Sabah, we gave it back to the people of Canberra and, and Australia. You know, professor, I wish to give this to you. Okay. Yes. Uh, what you have mentioned of uh, the 1976 crash. That's another sad relation that Australia and Sabah has. The Norman aircraft was manufactured by you Australians. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and the report uh, until now has not been out. I don't know if Dr. Jeffrey or my uh, state assemblyman has asked the question in Parliament, uh, in the state assembly. What is the outcome of the report? None has come. So that book again, likewise, is this, uh, where they explain it's a biography of the man. And of course, it touches on how Australia, uh, no man built the aircraft. I give this to the university. Of course, it's banned. It's not banned. <laughs> okay. And most of all, the birth of Malaysia, written by the late uh, Dr. Ahmad James Wong. This is a man who applied what was the promises of Malaysia. Uh, I give it again to you guys to read out. And of course, they are all printed because they are all illegal. So, <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. This is the only originals I have, so the rest are photocopy. So, read them if you can. I don't know if they are now photocopying here for research purposes. But uh, I'm very glad and very happy that you all are here. Think of us, pray for us, and you know, keep up uh, with the news of what's happening in Sabah, Sarawak, and Peninsula Malaysia. We may be, you know, we may be a little bit mad now with so many extremism happening here and there. But one thing's for certain: they can never play with us in Sabah and Sarawak because we are no longer the dependent people that they used to have. And we are not going to act on this as an oppressed citizen, but we're going to act on this because it is right. Thank you very much.
first one Tabunan in the 80s. I always thought there was hope, but I guess uh, I was wrong. My question to both YB uh, Jeffrey and YB Ignatia is that I was very disappointed in the last general election when uh, I guess one reason how Sabah can have changes is by uniting for various reasons. We had Pakatan Rai at one side, Dato Sri Jeffrey's group one side and uh, YB Yong Tekli one side and because of this unity, we were not able to um, get the votes or rather get the seats as what we should have had. My question is, you may not be able to answer me now, but is there a distinct possibility that there will be unity for the next general election, which may just be in the next three years' time? Will there be unity as what the unity that we had among the opposition in uh, West Malaysia or Will we see another loose coalition? Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that's a very important question. And that's exactly uh, what needs to be done. Uh, the process of uh, coming together has already started. All the political parties that, that contested in the last general election uh, the ones that you mentioned, uh, and uh, SAPP, STAR, and uh, independent, <laughs> we have no one to independence. Uh, we are actually coming together, uh, we are talking, we are planning to organize joint programs, and we are aware that we have no choice, but no better choice than to work together if we want to defeat the current government. And uh, we will make sure that this time around, we set aside all our personal uh, egos and whatever, uh, so that we can find a solution. So uh, this is uh, what I can say. Huh? Uh, the problem now is the political parties that contested has now become crowded uh, with new political parties being approved. There are now 11 political, new political parties. So this may, these political parties may uh, join the fray and uh, it may even be used by the Malaysian national. Uh, to split again uh, the votes. So this is what <coughs> we will be uh, facing with in the next election. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jesse, just to answer your question. Um, we cannot not work together because the electorates will punish us. Um, the hope and aspirations, not only of Sabah, Sarawak, as I mentioned, but also of Peninsula is for Sabah and Sarawak to work together, especially in Sabah, where um, we have always had political dynamics which went from very Sabahanistic, parochial in a sense, our issues, uh, to a national one. And we now know if we do not work together, Barisan National will enjoy and continue their rule, their regime over us in the next five years after the 14th general election. So the public will punish us if we do not. Um, again, we have to set aside our egos. It is egos after all, because every political party is the best, isn't it? So, uh, and every politician's idea is always the best, I thought. So uh, we have to let it go. And we need to find humility. We need to find some sense 
amongst ourselves that the we can work together. I am ever ready to work together with any one. The fact that I'm in a nationalist party, Kadila, uh, and the fact that I speak all the same during our meetings and discussion, and the fact that I maintain this until now as a member of the party, as and as a deputy secretary general of that party, uh, you know, uh, hopefully will bear results. And thank you, Jesse, for reminding us. I just know that uh, it's now 1.30, which you know, theoretically we're supposed to finish at. So if anybody wants to leave, feel free to do so. But I think we can probably go on for about another half an hour as long as nobody comes and knocks on the door and says that the room here. So 